With the Battle Royale genre being the flavour of the month at the moment, I decided to try and build a secondhand PC that had the ability to play them all at some high settings, 60fps, or be able to drop the settings to low and give those high refresh rate monitors something to do. Introducing Royale Rumble, the 494 Aussie, or 354 US dollar beast, that is ready to compete with the best of them and claim a few chicken dinners. As always, let's check out the components and the prices. To start the build off, I snagged an i5 3570K 4 core, 4 threaded CPU from eBay for just $85. Next up is the motherboard, which is surprisingly hard to come across an overclockable board for this chipset that doesn't cost you more than some new ones. This is an ASRock Z77 Pro 3 ATX motherboard I found listed on the Facebook marketplace for 50 Aussie dollars as it was advertised as faulty due to a few bent pins, but I fixed that up. To overclock the CPU and keep it cool, I'm going to need something decent, so from eBay I found a Cooler Master Hyper 212 LED Turbo for 30 bucks, which is a great dual fan cooler. I scored two 4GB sticks of G-Skills Ripjaws 1600MHz DDR3 RAM from Facebook Marketplace, also for 30 Aussie dollars. The Facebook Marketplace has come up big for this build, as I also found a Gigabyte Winforce 4GB GTX 970 for just 100 Aussie bucks, which is a bargain for that card. Secondhand cases are hard to come by in my area, unfortunately, so I took a trip to my closest MSY store and picked up the Armageddon Kagami K1 ATX case for 49 bucks. And let me tell you, this case is a piece of shit. Don't buy it. While at MSY, I also picked up a Kingston 240GB SSD for just 45 bucks, which is a great price on a brand new drive. For mass storage, I got a 1TB WD Black 7200RPM hard drive from eBay for 30 bucks. The power supply is also from eBay, which is an Antec True Power 650W unit for 45 bucks. Remember that piece of crap case I was talking about? Yeah, well it didn't come with any fans, so I had to buy a 3 pack of up here T12 series 120mm fans from Amazon for 30 bucks. Don't buy these either, as they have a proprietary connector and move less air than your gran trying to blow out birthday candles. Adding all that up if you didn't bother is 494 Aussie or 354 US, which isn't the cheapest this build could be, but it's still solid nonetheless. Now all that stuff's out of the way, it's time for the build montage. Enjoy.
For benchmarking, I managed to overclock the CPU to 4.6 GHz at 1.27 volts and get the GPU's boost clock up 100 MHz to 1479 and the memory up 200 MHz to 3700, which is 7400 MHz effective memory speed. All game settings are listed under the title and I tried for mostly high settings 60 FPS but you can lower a few things if frames are more important than visuals. Two more tests I like to put PCs through are Cinebench R15, which it received a score of 605 CB, and also a 1 minute Battlefield 4 1080p 60fps gameplay render test in which it managed a time of 2 minutes 38. In conclusion, if you are looking to get on the Battle Royale PC hype train, grab yourself a graphics card like the 970, but I would suggest getting a better CPU as I did find a CPU bottleneck was present in a couple of the titles such as Battlefield 5 and COD Blackout, which is a little disappointing. Motherboards for this chipset are more expensive than necessary and are rarely available, but an entry level Ryzen platform or maybe a newer Intel one are both great alternatives which wouldn't cost all that much more. Also, one final note, good luck getting a lobby on some of these games as most of them are basically dead already thanks to free to play battle royales, so stick to Fortnite and Apex Legends. If you enjoyed this video leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it please consider subscribing for more PC builds and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question or criticism, leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching.